Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and happy Thursday. Today is Cooking Day with Koichi Mizushima. My name is Ted Fong, and I'm producer of this program, as well as most of what you see here at ACC online. Uh, Koichi is a familiar face at ACC, wearing many hats, not just as a chef, but he's also a musician, and he's a good friend to many of us here at ACC. Uh, Koichi used to be the owner of Kumon Japanese Restaurant, he is the minister's assistant and the youth coordinator for the Buddhist Church of America. But today, he is your own personal sushi chef. So welcome, Koichi. Thank you so much, Ted, for having me here today. And what are we going to be doing? We're going to be doing a whole bunch of different sushi rolls today. So I'm going to try to get through as much as I can, and let's just see what happens, all right? Is, are you ready for the ride? Let's try that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's do it. And folks out there online, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat, yeah. and we will find some way to get it to Koichi. And I believe you can even unmute yourself. Uh, but if you want to ask a question, either type it in chat, or if you want to say something live, um, type your name in chat, and we'll call you in the order of the questions received. <laughs> so thank you very much. Let's get started. All right. Thank you, Ted. Very good. Uh, again, welcome, everyone, to today's. Uh, it's not really cooking, is it? Because in sushi making, there's not a lot of cooking involved. So we'll call today a sushi demonstration. As I mentioned before, I'm going to try to get through as many different rolls as I can. Um, and today's style of cooking is kind of sushi making at home. So we're going to try to show you some tips and tricks. And it'll be kind of local, too. Since I'm in Sacramento, a lot of the things that I'm going to show you are where I get ingredients from in Sacramento. So without further ado, let's begin. What I'm going to start off with is um, we have a couple of shrimp tempuras here. Um, I gave Ted this wonderful graphic. This is a little bit cheating because what we do is I got these from Costco. Uh, they're, they're Kirkland brand of shrimp tempuras. They work out fantastic in the air fryer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start these off. So you can see they're already pre-battered. They come in a pack of five. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take these. You can throw them frozen. I'm going to start them in the air fryer really quick over here, okay? I'm going to drop them in here really quick. And I'm going to get this started. Okay. I think that's going. Okay. We think that's going. Six. Uh, all you need is about six, seven minutes, and you can put it in that uh, 370, that standard mode. Six, seven minutes, those things will be ready to go. And the reason I want to start those first is because they're really, really hot and I gotta pull the tails off. So, okay, let's get started here today. Um, let me show you some of the basic ingredients that I have here for you, really, really basic. Um, English cucumber from the regular supermarket. Uh, I unwrapped it, I washed it completely, I let it dry. Same with the green onions. You wanna wash everything first and you wanna let it dry. And today, uh, I'm gonna show you how to prep all of these items. So it's gonna be a little bit slow today, not that exciting, but we're gonna try to go through everything. And of course, you all know, regular sesame seeds. This is just a regular uh, Japanese kewpie mayonnaise. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen this. Um, all the stuff I get, I usually get at Oto's Market, you know, so um, this is a kewpie mayonnaise. I've actually added a tiny, tiny bit of this shiracha sauce. You all know what this is. This is your preferred spicy sauce right here. I've added a tiny bit into this to make it kind of a spicy mayo. And uh, what I have here is my homemade, just a little teriyaki sauce. And this is just good old fashioned regular mayonnaise, just regular mayonnaise. Um, maybe we'll give you some links to uh, the sauce recipes a little bit later, but if you wanna make a really, really easy teriyaki mix, all you have to do is one, port, one part soy sauce, one part sugar. Just one to one, and that will create a really good teriyaki base, and you can't mess it up, it's one to one. You can chop in green onions and garlic and ginger if you want to make it a little fancier, or you can just leave it like that. Okay, so let's get started here. We got our shrimps cooking. What are we going to start with today? We're going to prep our green onions first really quick, okay? All right, so what I like to do is I like to cut a little bit of the white ends off here, but we like to leave some of it on. Always clean up your green onions. If you have a sad, wilty part here, let's get rid of that. We don't want that in there. Um, I always want to uh, trim off my ends, make everything nice and clean because sushi making is really about presentation. Obviously, it's about the quality and, uh, of the food, but it's also very much about presentation. One trick I like to do with these green onions is I'll kind of slice them down here at the base where it's really thick, okay? And this way, we'll make little thinner, kind of thinner um, parts so they're not all giant thick pieces, okay? Like anything stringy, go ahead and take it off. Let's put that in the garbage right there, okay? And then what we're going to do is let's just chop up these green onions kind of as small as we can. 
And we want to get these really small because we're going to be using this primarily as a garnish for today's dish, okay? Um, of course, green onion provides uh, a little bit of flavor, but we don't want to overpower um, any of the uh, sushi flavors with the green onion. So this is going to serve mostly as a garnish, okay? And this is something I want you guys to practice at home. When you do your basic chopping techniques, I know it looks all fancy when you watch it on TV, but it's really not. If you're right-handed, you take your left hand and you make a claw. And this is what you hold your food together with right here. You hold it in a claw fashion. The knife actually brushes against your knuckle. And if your fingers are in a claw, you'll never cut your fingers. So that's something you can practice at home. Start slow, but always use this technique as you cut. And over time, you will master this technique and it will help you immensely in all of your food prep at home. I mean, that's really what cooking is. It involves a lot of prep and that's what we're doing now, okay? So there we go, we got our green onion. We're gonna set this aside here in this lovely little bowl right here. That's way too much green onion for today, but that's okay. We're just doing it uh, to show you how to prep, okay? So we're gonna do this here and we're gonna set this aside here. We're gonna clean off our board. Don't worry folks, there is a garbage can under here. I'm not sweeping stuff on the floor, okay. Now, we're gonna get our English cucumber. Um, this is the biggest challenge when you pick your English cucumbers at the store. The biggest challenge is you wanna to try to find the straightest one because a lot of them are rah, so it's hard to do, but that's okay. We're gonna get the straight sections of where we're gonna cut and what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to cut it about the half size of a sheet of nori. So the objective is, is to cut it about half the size, like a half size. So, and uh, I've, I've done this enough times to kind of estimate about how, how big it is. I think it's about here. Eh, let's call it there, why not? Let's just take a good guess. Now, we got our English cucumber here. The reason we like to use English is because um, the seeds uh, come out a lot easier and you don't have to remove every single seed. So what I like to do is cut it in quarters, right? And then as I mentioned, you can use the seeds, but I, I will remove a little bit of the seeds here, okay? For each of these English cucumbers, okay? So, all right, and then we have, oh, I did make my English cucumber pieces a little on the shorter side, <laughs> after I was boasting about how precise I was. Okay, now we're gonna get these English cucumbers here, and let's just make little slices, just so they're a little bit more manageable, okay? and we can put them in our rolls. Um, as you notice, I may be cutting these into thirds, but that doesn't mean you cut all English cucumbers into thirds, because some are larger, some are smaller. So in sushi making, there is, you gotta use a little bit of judgment, right? There's a little bit of judgment involved. Okay, so we got our nice little sticks. This is gonna be one of our ingredients. I'm gonna put this to the side right here, and we're gonna use those a little bit later. Okay, so we prepped our green onions, we prepped our English cucumber. Oh, okay. You guys all know what uh, kanikama is. Um, I didn't bring the whole package because I didn't want to use all 30 sticks. Kanikama is an imitation crab and it's actually made out of a kind of a white fish and it's kind of a, okay. So, so it is fish. So, but those people that are allergic to shellfish, you will be okay with this because it's not made out of real crab. When you open the package, um, hey, our shrimp tempuras are done but we're gonna leave them in there for now. Actually, I'm gonna pull them out and let them cool. Okay, we're gonna leave that right here. We're gonna let those guys cool down, that's okay. Okay, now, we're gonna take out some of these kanikama sticks and uh, <laughs> these come frozen, okay? So when you get them at, uh, at the store, they come frozen. So um, what I like to do, this is gonna be kind of weird, but you take them, you have to kind of squeeze them out because there's a lot of, there's a lot of water content in these. I know that seems kind of uh, not really appealing, but I got it. This is the tips for at home cooking. I'm showing you the real behind the scenes, okay? So we got to squeeze out the water. I don't even know if you can see that on camera, but we have to squeeze out the water, okay? Now, don't forget, very important, unwrap the plastic. I have seen people make sushi and not unwrap these bad boys, and that's not good. We don't want plastic in our sushi roll, okay? So we're gonna unwrap these, okay? All right, we're gonna unwrap all these. And the reason I took out a few is we're gonna use these for some of the rolls, of course. But the other thing we're gonna use them for is we are gonna also chop some of this up and make a little mix with this kanikama 
and mayonnaise, just regular good old fashioned mayonnaise, okay? And we uh, kind of refer to that at the restaurant as crab salad, kani salad. So this is a nice uh, Osaki Kanikama brand, and I like it because it really flakes apart when you cut it, okay? So um, as you can see, it's really flaky, so we'll put it in our bowl, and let's make sure we flake it up really good. Let's make sure we, we break it up really good into our bowl, right? No, 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 no. Okay, we flake it up really good, okay? Oh, that's too much Connie for this bowl. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be spilling a lot of this. It's gonna be mixing all over, but that's okay. That's okay. Because this is all about sushi making at home, right? So this is the real behind the scenes show here of what it's gonna look like, okay? And as I mentioned before, we're just gonna use good old fashioned regular mayo. Now you can use Kewpie brand mayonnaise if you want, if you wanna be fancy, but you can also just use regular mayo. And this stuff, ooh, that's a lot of mayo, huh? Ooh, that seems like a lot. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. So I like to just put in a little bit of mayo at a time, and then you just mix it up. But you can see it's pretty absorbent. I don't know if you're able to see that, but it, it absorbs quite a bit. Oh, let's get a little more mayo in there. Yeah, get a little more mayo. Uh, okay, okay, there's some mayo in there. Okay, and then you wanna mix this guy up really good. So this is kind of like a crab honey salad, right? Okay, okay, all right, all right, there we go. I'll leave that right there. And as you can see, I'm using a separate board for prepping my initial ingredients, right? I'm using a different cutting board because I don't want this to be the same cutting board that I make my sushi on with the nori, okay? All right, let's see here. Now we got the kanikama going. Here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna prep some maguro, some ahi tuna, okay? now. I already prepared this at home because I buy kind of in bulk, I buy the giant loins and I cut them down into perfectly manageable sushi pieces. And if you wanna learn how to cut the tuna loins, um, I'm gonna ask Ted to put a link to a YouTube video I made earlier on how to cut down the sushi loin into a manageable size. And I use my handy little seal a meal thing and I put these in the freezer. So um, we took this out last night and we thawed it out, okay and we have a nice piece of tuna. Now, what you wanna do with your tuna is, um, we're gonna try to make um, kind of nigiri style um, sushi pieces, okay? So what we're gonna do is, you can see on the side here, some parts have a little more um, grains in them and stuff like that. So the other thing I mentioned earlier about sushi making is it's all about presentation. So even though this is a great piece of tuna here, we are gonna do a nice little slice here just to make a perfect, beautiful edge. And we're gonna do the same thing with this other side, okay? And I'm gonna cut, I'll cut a little bit more off just to, I'm gonna cut a little bit more off, okay. But guess what? Does anything go to waste in sushi making? Well, in Japanese cuisine in general, or all cuisines, I should say, nothing ever goes to waste. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these pieces and we're gonna chop them down into more manageable pieces, and uh, we're gonna use them for other things, okay? So this one is a nice piece. I'm gonna kinda use, save this for what I'm gonna use later. This is gonna be for the tuna roll, okay? So I'm kinda doing that. And the rest of it, what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna chop this guy up here. Let's, let's chop this up. And when you cut tuna, you're gonna have various pieces of tuna. Like uh, you're gonna have the belly part, you're gonna have the part that's attached to the skin. As many of you know, if you've, if you've worked with tuna before, ahi tuna, um, you're gonna notice that you have a lot of different pieces of tuna. What I'm showing you here is only the prime, prime cut piece, okay? So even when you have the skin part, you're gonna scrape it all off. And my video outlines how to do that. Now, now we have a beautiful loin piece right here of tuna, right? A nice beautiful loin. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but do you see that the, the tuna has grains? It has lines in the tuna. <laughs> There's our CEO, ACC, I gotta say hello. Okay, um, there are grains here in the tuna, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna cut perpendicular to those grains, does that make sense? So if the grain is this way, we cut this way, okay? Does that make sense? Perpendicular to the grain. So, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the way the grains are. This is the way the grains are going, so I'll be cutting this way. So I'm gonna make my first cut, 
And again, we have to cut off this corner piece to get the right size for the nigiri sushi shape that we're gonna do. But again, does this go to waste? Absolutely not. We're gonna cut this up and add this to our tuna mix. And now, we are gonna cut beautiful pieces right here, just like this, okay? If you're a good customer, you get nice big pieces. If you're grumpy and mean and rude, you get little small, small no good pieces. I'm kidding, no, we, we never did that, okay. So, we're cutting these for nice nigiri slices. Aren't those beautiful? Look at that, it just looks, it looks gorgeous, right? Nothing better than beautiful, beautiful fresh ingredients, okay? We're gonna take these pieces now and we're gonna kind of set them aside here, okay? Ready to go for later. And we're gonna take these and we're gonna um, chop these up too, right? We're gonna chop these up for later and we're gonna make a spicy tuna mix out of this because spicy tuna is a big favorite for folks. People love spicy tuna. They just love it, okay? So we're gonna do this here and we're gonna put this in this bowl. Again, I put too much stuff in the bowl, don't I here? Okay, well, we're gonna do our best to mix it up. And believe it or not, you can use a regular um, mix of mayonnaise you can use Japanese mayonnaise, of course, for all of these things. You can substitute that Kewpie mayonnaise. But you can also just use a regular, regular mayo here for this as well. Don't put as much in here as you do with the kanikama. The kanikama is pretty absorbent and it soaks it up. But this, you don't want to overpower it with, with mayo, you know, on this. That's kind of, right? We don't want to flood it. But a little bit. Now, we're going to get our spice over here. How spicy do you want it? That's up to you. Okay, I'm kind of weak, so I'm just a little, a eh, little bit, not too much, okay? Not too much, okay. All right, now, we're gonna mix this up here. Nice and mix. As I said, I wish I had a little bigger bowl, but you know, there we go. We're doing the best that we can here, okay? And that's a real simple way to make a spicy tuna mix. Um, very, very, tr you know, basic, really basic and simple, right? Okay, so we got that going there as well, okay? All right. Ted, you got any questions coming in here while I rinse my towel off in the sink here? Any questions from the studio audience folks there? Uh, yes, when do we get to eat? When do we get to eat? Ted, you're going to get to eat all of this. Don't worry. Let me rinse my towel out as I go. You got to keep your station clean. Okay. Okay. All right. Now. This is the most important part of sushi making, right? It's all about the prep. It's about the preparation. It's about getting everything started, right? I mean, that's really the hard part. Um, once you get everything set and you're ready to go, that's when you can really get busy and get going. Okay, avocados. Um, what I like to do is, it, and again, I'm catering this more towards local audiences, and we are located in Sacramento. So if you want to get ripe avocados that are ready to go, I typically go to, typically I go to like Rayleigh's and Bel Air. Um, there you can find regular ripe avocados. A good way to check an avocado's ripeness, obviously for me, if I'm getting a Haas avocado, I go by color. I want it to have kind of a brownish color, not too bright green. Obviously you can tell by the touch, it's firm yet it gives a little bit, right? It's not 100% rock solid like a, like a, you know, it doesn't want to be hard. And if you really want to cheat in the thing, you can uh, pop the little thing off there and you can look in that color over there. So anyway, okay. So avocado, as you all know, there is an avocado pit right in the middle. So we are going to cut and be very careful to not go too hard because if you have an overripe avocado, that pit will disintegrate and you will go right through it and, and cut yourself, okay? And so I want to cut this guy exactly in half and then break open for freshness, okay. and then. I'm gonna cut this into quarters because this is what I've typically found is the easiest way to work with them, okay? It's easier to work with them when they're in quarters. Um, you don't have to do that. You can leave it in a half and you can scoop out of it and do that. But for today, I'm gonna to make everything into nice quarters. And if it's a ripe, nice avocado, it'll peel beautifully. We're lucky, all right. It's the magic of television. The avocado's worked out, okay? So we're gonna get one, two, and we're gonna get these quarters ready to go. Okay, and we're gonna revisit these in just a few moments. Okay, so it looks like I think I got everything prepped up here. I'm gonna move this to the side. Okay, everybody in Japanese, what is this called at home? 
Yep, I think I heard you say nori, right? Nori is a uh, dried seaweed. I don't know if you can pick this up on camera. There is a shiny side and there is a rough side, okay? When we put it down on our cutting board, which side are we gonna put up? Which side is up, rough or shiny? That's right, rough side up, shiny side down. And for certain rolls, that's not gonna matter necessarily, okay? What we're gonna start with today, the beginning rolls are called uramaki, uramaki. Ura means kind of rear or back, and maki means to roll. So this is kind of a reverse roll, a backwards roll. Um, not necessarily the most traditional thing in Japan, but it, obviously it's become very, very popular here. So this is called uramaki. We're gonna start with the basic, basic California roll. Now what I have here is just a bowl of just plain water, just plain water. The water is very important because you have to uh, get it on your hands so it doesn't stick to the rice. This is very important. Do not get in this water like you're some kind of a raccoon, like and cleaning vegetables and stuff like that on the side of a river, okay? We don't want you to be all nasty, but it has to be moist enough, um, moist enough to get it off, but not too dripping wet, okay? Um, okay, before I do that, there's a question about the QP mayonnaise and regular mayo. Yes, there is a difference in flavor. Uh, I believe the QP mayonnaise is probably a little bit a little bit on the creamier side, if so. But when you start adding in all these other ingredients and spice and stuff, um, it's so close that uh, uh, for me at a home level, um, it's a cost issue and it's fine. But like I said, you can use QP for everything. It's a little creamier and smoother. Okay, back to the water here. So when I dip my hand in the water, I like to call it just a dip with the fingers. I kind of dip it in the water and then I, and I, then I, spread it through my hands, right? I dip, spread, but then I flick off and I, you have to give it a clap. So I don't know if you see sushi chefs do that, right? So I call this the dip, rub, clap. And I don't want it to be dripping, dripping wet, okay? Oh, I forgot, Ted. I forgot to tell you about the sushi rice, didn't I? That's right. I was supposed to begin today's segment with a demonstration. This is uh, sushi rice. It's regular Japanese medium grain rice. Today, I happen to use Nishiki brand. You can use other brands. I like New Rose as well. Um, but you can use Japanese medium grain rice and you cook the rice and then you add the vinegar. So if we want I'm gonna show you how I did that this morning right now. Let's go to that clip right now on how I made the sushi rice. Okay, I just took four cups of freshly cooked rice right directly from the rice cooker so it's very hot. What I like to do is kind of uh, break it up just a little bit. We want to get our rice a little bit fluffy, right? And typically when you make sushi rice, you can use a tiny bit less water than you normally would for regular rice, but it's just, it's very immeasurable, it's tiny. So as I mentioned, this is four cups of cooked rice. And what I have here is eight ounces of prepared sushi vinegar. Hopefully we'll show you a link to that recipe. And we're gonna pour this on while it's piping hot. And you notice I'm pouring it kind of on top of the shamoji. So it kind of sprinkles evenly all around the rice, kind of like a waterfall, right? And we wanna get that all in there, okay? And as we mix our sushi rice, remember it's hot, you go from the bottom to the top and you kind of fold it over. And as you fold it over, you do a nice chopping motion to try to break up all of the rice. So every single grain gets the flavoring. And the reason we do this nice chopping motion is to preserve the grains of rice. We don't wanna smash the rice together, okay? So we wanna make sure you get all that liquid out from underneath by scooping, scooping, scooping and folding, scooping and folding, and then we do our nice chopping motion. Obviously, if you have a traditional circular wooden uh, container for the rice, that's gonna work better, but since you can buy these containers anywhere, like these rectangular tubs, I use these for home because they're just as uh, convenient and they work just fine. Another tip and trick is you wanna make sure that you get the rice kernels off of the side of your container because a lonely rice kernel that gets left up there will get all dry and get all crusty and you don't want hard rice kernels inside of your sushi rice. So this initial mix is the most important, the initial mixing of the rice, because you want to get all that sushi su, that sushi vinegar, really infused into all the grains of rice. 
And you can see that I'm using a container that's big enough to um, spread out the rice, you know, to let it cool naturally. So after we did our initial mix, as you can see, I went around several times, okay? And then I want to kind of fluff this all up, make it nice and flat. And what we'll do is we'll leave this for about five minutes, and then we'll come back every five minutes or so and keep mixing it. As we mix it, the liquid will uh, absorb into the rice and it'll get a little firmer and a little firmer. You want to let this cool to room temperature. And this process should take anywhere from 60 to about 90 minutes. And then only after it's cool can you cover the rice. But you have to wait till it's cooled down. You never want to cover sushi rice while it's still warm because it'll continue to cook. Okay, and that's how you prepare your sushi rice. And after it's cooled down to room temperature, we like to get a very clean, thin, wet towel. Very, uh, and then I, I really squeegee the water out so it's just damp. And then we make a little baby blanket for our rice, right? We keep them all tucked in and nice, okay? And that helps keep it moist. Okay, so what I like to do, I was mentioning before, um, the rice is such an important fundamental of all sushi making. Okay, so I wanna dip, dip in the water, squeeze your hand and clap off the excess. Dip and clap off the excess. I like to first grab a ball of rice. This is kind of how I do it, okay? This is how I was taught. And um, I try to grab the right amount that I'll need first, okay? So what I'll do is I grab kind of like, it's small, it's not quite a baseball, it's a little smaller than a baseball. Again, I'm right-handed. I like to start with the nori down here and what I'll do is I will start at the top corner and I will distribute this rice kind of like I'm squeezing it out like a tube of toothpaste, okay? So you'll see I squeeze it out, squeeze it out, squeegee it out, squeegee it out, okay? And I got a relatively, you know, long thing that goes across the top. Now, you can see I'm dipping my hands in the water kind of constantly, right, to keep that level of moisture, but not sopping wet, very important, okay? You don't want your hands dripping and gross. Okay, I'm gonna manipulate this rice by pushing it down. Now, here's the thing, you gotta be confident when you do sushi making, okay? You can't come in here all willy-nilly and be like, eh, I think I'm gonna do it, I think I can. You gotta approach it like you approach your life. You have to tackle it, you have to go for it, you have to be confident, okay? So when you go in there, you gotta do it like you mean it, okay? So we're gonna get our hands wet a little bit. You're gonna use your fingertips and your thumbs, fingertips and thumbs. Your palms should not be touching the rice. We're gonna move this thing like it's pizza dough, okay? I want you to think of it like it's a piece of pizza dough. You're gonna manipulate it, you're gonna push it down, you're gonna roll that guy down. You're gonna roll it down. I know it kind of looks easy when you see me do it on camera and when you do it at home, it's not gonna come out the same, but this just takes a little bit of practice. As you can see, I have a little excess on this side. That's okay, I'm gonna take that there. I'm gonna put it over here, okay? We're moving it all around. It's a fluid, fluid thing. There's no you know, um, hard and fast rules on how you do it. I want to get a relatively level surface. As you can see, I didn't, I was manipulating it, but I wasn't mashing it together. If you want to maintain the grains of rice, you want the rice to still be there. You want to cover all the edges and corners and you want that guy to be level. Very important. If you neglect the ends, when you roll it, what's going to happen? You're going to have sad ends, okay? We don't want that. We're going to put a little bit of sesame seeds on top here, just a little. Just a little, not crazy, okay? We're gonna sprinkle that on there. And here's the part, here's the magic where it happens. You flip it on your cutting board, okay? That's the main thing, you flip it on your cutting board, okay? Now, um, now we're gonna put in here some of the um, kani sticks that I had earlier, okay? We're gonna take those kani kama sticks here. We're gonna put two of those sticks in there. And then we're gonna get that avocado. You remember that I cut those guys into, this is why I do it this way, it's easier. And now, some people cut their avocados this way. I don't know, I do it from the back. I don't know, it's, it's a matter, of, it doesn't matter, it's a matter of preference. Same thing, I know you say, oh, how many pieces do you cut them into, thirds or fourths? Again, it's gonna matter of the thickness and the size of the avocado. I am cutting more for portion size than I am just counting a number. Now that happened to fit in there kind of perfectly, so you can tell the middle, it tapers in a little bit, so let's go ahead and make sure we give a little bit of a boost there in the middle right, because you don't want that middle to be sad. Every part of your California roll has to be considered. Every part, when you make it, you're not just thinking about the middle, the main part, the end, you're thinking about the whole entirety. Okay, so it's very important that the ingredients are in the center and they're in the middle. Now, we're gonna take this, we're gonna roll from the bottom to the top. We're gonna roll from the bottom to the top. And once you start rolling, you can't stop, because you're rolling, okay? All right, so dip my hands again clap that excess water off. I'm gonna go from the bottom, 
I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to tuck that guy in. I'm going to tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, and overlap it right there. So the joint of the roll is kind of perpendicular to the cutting board, right? Where the roll uh, joins. Now, I got a sushi roller mat here, a makisu, right? How convenient. It's already wrapped in plastic wrap. That's the secret. Very convenient. Since it's already wrapped in plastic wrap, I just go on the top of this roll. And this is where I'm a little firm, little firm. Um, I get the sides straight. Sides straight, and then tap off the top. So if you can see it from the side, it is a square. It's more of a square shape. I don't know if, if that's really translating on TV, but it's kind of a square shape when you do these rolls. But I lift it up so it's not sad, and then I just kind of pinch it up, okay? All right, now, wet my hands again. I'm constantly wetting my hands, and then pew, 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 you gotta get those ends in. Pew, pew, okay, you gotta get those ends in good. Now, okay, I'm gonna switch my knife here. This is my prep knife. Um, what I'm gonna do here is, now, with the knife, I'm gonna get it a little wet in the water, let it drip down a little bit, and I'm gonna cut the roll. When you cut sushi rolls, it's not like cutting vegetables, okay? Vegetables you chop. Sushi rolls involve a lot more finesse. You have to move. So it's like playing a violin, okay? So you think about it and use the entire bow of the violin. Don't just cut with the tip of your knife or just the base. You gotta use the whole knife and you have to use that motion. If you're cutting correctly, it doesn't require a ton of downward pressure. So for example, I'll hold this very loosely with my pinky up. If you're cutting it right, you're, you're just moving it like this, see? See that? Boom. See? I wasn't pushing down on the knife, okay? So California rolls for today's presentation, we're going to cut it into, let's do it into eight pieces. I feel like doing it eight pieces. So that was down the center, right? And then we're going to cut it in the center again, okay? Okay. And then we're going to cut each portion into half. And if my math is correct, that should be eight pieces, right? And as you can see, you notice that I'm always kind of tidying up my my area, right? Do you notice that as I go? I kind of tidy up the area. I always keep my area clean. You also notice that I'm wiping my knife off a lot as well. When I do that, um, I always wipe with the blade away from me and I place it at the top of my cutting board blade away. If you develop these types of habits in your preparation, you will be uh, have less accidents, okay? You're not going to cut yourself. It's just really good to develop these habits. Okay, back to the roll. Here we are. We got this roll right here, okay? So we can do a couple of things here. We can take this roll and we're gonna keep it in its cut form and we're gonna go down, 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 okay? And then you can even take these ends and put these up for presentation. How cool is that? And I have a nice little plate over here and I'm gonna grab it like this, but it's at a diagonal this way, but I'm gonna put it on the plate in a straight way. Okay, so it's straight on the plate, kind of. Right? Okay, so that's our California roll, right? We got our California roll. So now, you remember those shrimps that we cooked a little earlier, right? Those shrimps are done. Okay, they're out here now. They're ready to go. So I'm going to get another piece of nori, which is what? Dried seaweed. Which side down? Shiny side down, rough side up. For these rolls, it doesn't matter. But for other rolls, it does matter. So again, I want to create good habits so you never have to think. Okay, so you always do it a certain way. Okay, look at these beautiful shrimps. They came out of the uh, air fryer. Nice, okay. Now, we got our nori ready. We're gonna make the rice roll again. We're gonna start rolling the rice. How do you do it? Let's review, grab, the, grab a ball, not quite softball size, little, maybe baseball size. We're gonna start, we're not, we're not packing it together. This is a very light touch, okay, very light. We're gonna distribute it across the top of the nori like a tube of toothpaste. We're going to bring it down, fingertips and thumbs. We're going to bring this down, and you're manipulating it. Like what? Like what? I better see pizza dough in the comments, okay? Pizza dough. Move it down like it's a big piece of pizza dough. Move it down. Move it down. Okay? And I'm keep adjusting everything. See how I'm always tweaking and adjusting? And I'm getting this thing all the way to the corners, and I'm getting it level. Very important to be level to the corners. We're going to hit this guy with a little sesame seed. Boom. And we're going to flip that over. Let's get our shrimps over here. We've got our little shrimpies. Hey, I don't want those tails in there. Do you want tails in the shrimp? No. Here's a good way to get the tail off. Pinch it so you squeeze that tail meat out of there. Whoopsie. 
Okay, you want to get it? Oh, I'm not doing a good job. Okay, pinch it. Okay, pinch it. And this is why I cooked those earlier, because if it came right out of the fryer, it would be way too hot for me to touch, okay? Let's get these shrimp tempanas right in the middle. And we're gonna wet our hands. I'm constantly wetting my hands. Roll from where? Bottom to the top. Roll it from the bottom to the top. Get that guy in there. Make sure it's tucked in nice and snug, okay? And we're gonna get our sushi mat. And again, we're gonna grab it from the top. We're gonna go straight up the sides, straight up the sides, and just a little top off, okay? What, what do I do to the ends? What do I do to the ends? Choo choo. Okay, you gotta make that noise too every time. It's very important. The noise is what's important, okay? Choo choo. Okay, now we get another little cutting board here just so I don't make a mess on my board. We're gonna take this third of an avocado here and we're gonna do some fancy little slicing here, okay? We're gonna do some fancy little slicing and we're gonna put this on top of this shrimp tempura roll. Get our knife here. I like using a knife that's kind of skinny. It's not too fat. That's why I switched out knives. Um, you don't, I mean, of course you've seen professional sushi knives that cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but you can get away with a skinny knife as long as it's sharp. This has a tiny bit of flex to it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this avocado right here. Okay, but we're gonna take this guy and um, I'm touching the, this is, this is gonna take a lot of practice, okay? So don't stress out over this. We can, learn, we can learn this later when we get back in person. But your tip of your knife is touching the board and the angle is ever so slight. I would almost say like what, five, 10 degrees? I don't know, really slight, five degrees. You're holding the avocado down and you're going to cut off slices just like this. And I know it's gonna look easy on the TV, <laughs> but, the key to this is the, le the left hand pushing the avocado down flat and always maintaining the tip in contact with the cutting board so you maintain contact, okay? And then we're gonna take these avocado slices, we're grabbing it from the bottom, and we're gonna put it right onto the avocado. And if we continue to grab from the bottom, you will continue to layer it on top so the pattern is consistent, okay? We're gonna keep doing that. And look at that, we just cut the perfect amount. How fortunate was that, okay? Now, move this guy back to the side here. Now, we are going to use our sushi mat. And this is why we have all the plastic on here. We're gonna grab it again. Sometimes this one, I'll do a little more rounded, right? Maybe I won't flatten as much. I'll make it round, I'll push it down. And I'll go like that. Make sure you clean it off really quick. And bam, look at that, isn't that beautiful? This one, we're gonna present a little bit differently. We're gonna, instead of doubling up on it, we're gonna cut it all the way across. So I like to go in half first to give me a guide. That way it helps me estimate a little bit better and I can cut even pieces, right? And same thing, I'm gonna cut this into eight pieces as well. And you notice my cutting technique, right? I'm doing a lot of motion, I'm moving it a lot, I'm moving it a lot and I'm using the entire blade of the knife, okay? And I'm not, getting scared and just chopping down straight. Before I put it on the plate, I wanna give it one final light grab because that's kinda of like the final formation of the roll, right? You can see I'm wetting my hands in between all this. And same thing here. We are going to take this and we're gonna angle it down just like this. Angle, angle, angle. Same with this side, angle, angle, angle. And we're gonna put this right on the plate. Might not fit all the way across. Oh, it might, okay? All right, so this is what I like to call, we just named it the Rocky Roll. I don't know why. I have no idea why. There had to be a reason at some point back then. I don't know, maybe you can look it up on Google. Okay, so now let's do something else with the shrimp tempura rolls as well. We're gonna grab our nori again. You know, I leave the nori off to the side and I actually kind of leave it in the bag like this when I'm at home. And the reason is, is you don't want your nori to get wet, ever. When nori gets wet, it's in the garbage. It's done. There's no recovering. You can't dry it off. It's done. So you want to make sure your board is dry and you want to make sure your nori is dry. Okay. Um, and we're going to do another roll here with the shrimp tempuras. Okay. Now, um, sushi evolved over time. Um, and it wasn't, it hasn't been around, as far as I understand, it has not been around for like thousands and thousands of years. It's more like kind of hundreds and hundreds. Um, 
from what I understand, um, it evolved when fishermen used to uh, actually preserve the fish that they caught uh, before refrigeration was around, right? Before electricity, they used to fish and they would catch fish and they would put it into like barrels of uncooked rice, okome, right? The uncooked rice and the rice would kind of get the moisture out of it and they would heavily salt it as well. And that would create kind of a preservation process. And in the olden times, they actually just threw the rice away until one day somebody actually got an idea and cooked that rice, right? They cooked it. And as you would imagine, it had a heavily kind of salted flavor and, um, you know, kind of a, it was very flavored. And that was kind of the beginning of how sushi rice, that flavoring came and how it got incorporated in. So sushi is actually defined by the rice. People say, what is sushi? It's not raw fish necessarily. Um, it's not the ingredients, it is defined by the sushi rice. So if I rolled a hot dog in here, it would be a hot dog sushi, right? I know that sounds crazy, but that's what it is. Okay, bottom to top. Hopefully you got this technique down by now, the laying of the rice. And then we are gonna do this again here, okay? Okay. And let's do this again here. Hey, let's put, let's put some on here. Let's put some more avocado. Don't you like these? We like these, so let's put more avocado on there. Okay, we're gonna put some more on top of here. And then now we're also gonna use our really nice maguro tuna slices that we sliced earlier, right? So as you can see, look, I end up with little corners and stuff like that, right? So you should make all of these kinds of rolls first and then save all these bits and then put these all in your California roll, right? That's how to be perfectly efficient in um, your sushi making, right? That's the way to be perfectly efficient, okay? Do that. And let's put a nice little, oh man, look at that, look at that. Ted, do you like uh, sashimi? Do you like uh, raw fish? Oh, okay, good, you're gonna like these then. Okay, we're gonna put that on top, okay? And we're gonna get that. This is kind of like a roll, it doesn't have a name. You know, whatever, we're just making stuff up. That's the great thing about sushi. The combinations of what you can make are truly up to your imagination. I mean, it's limitless. What you wanna do, it's up to you, and that's where the creativity comes from, your flavor points, your favorite things, okay? Same thing, we're gonna cut this guy into eight pieces. It's a little harder with that fish on top because I have to push down on it with the knife so it doesn't squiggle around, and I have to kind of break it a little bit so it doesn't squiggle around, right? And sometimes it's gonna do that. But that's okay, that's all a part of it, and I gotta get through it, okay? Get this guy. Okay, there we go, not bad, not bad. Let's get this guy and let's get the mat on here one more time and shape it. That's the final thing that's so important with sushi making, the shaping, right? Because um, again, it's all about the presentation. And we're gonna do the same thing here with this. We're gonna take the half of it and we're gonna go angle down, angle down, angle down. And we're gonna put that guy right on there. We're gonna angle down, angle down, angle down. And we're gonna put that right on there. Yes, that looks so yummy. Now that we have these two roles established, let's, and now we're gonna get truly American here. Like in Japan, they didn't used to do this. They do it a little more now, but I don't think these sauces and stuff originated in Japan. I, I could be wrong, I'm not, I'm not sure. So um, I'm gonna take a little teriyaki, just a little bit, okay? And um, usually when you make a teriyaki sauce for chicken and beef, you will cook it over the stove and thicken it up with cornstarch. Um, this is just the base, so it's a little bit liquidy, so I'm not gonna put as much on. Okay, so let's just drizzle. Oh yeah, we're gonna drizzle, oh yeah, we're gonna drizzle a little bit of teriyaki on there, look at that, yeah. We're gonna drizzle that on there, yeah, there we go, there we go. And now, this is the um, mayo that I used earlier, but this has a little bit of sriracha in here, very, very little, so we call it a spicy mayo. Um, and that's why it gets, and I don't know if you can see it at home, but it is a little more pink and orange than the regular white mayo. And so we're gonna, ooh, look at that. We're gonna sprinkle that guy on there too. Look at that, look at that, oh yeah. And I know for traditional, traditional uh, Japanese uh, culinary connoisseurs, this may be a little bit blasphemous, but again, these are American style rolls with shrimp tempura on the middle. Trust me, it's delicious, okay. Hey, what are we gonna do? Remember those green onions that we cut earlier? We are gonna use this as a little tiny garnish 
just a little bit. Don't overpower it with the green onions because, you know, and obviously green onions, it gives it a little nice color, right? It gives it a little garnish. Um, it just looks great on there. And that's why you want to cut your green onions really small too. You don't want, when you cut them, you don't want big old giant hunks of green onion on there. That doesn't look good, okay? And here's the last thing that I didn't mention earlier. This is masago. I didn't bring the whole giant tub, but you can get this anywhere too. I, I get mine at Oto's too. It's just a masago. It's a, um, I believe it's a smelt, a smelt row. Uh, the fish eggs, the little small fish, tiny guys, okay? And then, so I'm gonna do this too. I'm gonna get a little bit up here. You can leave this frozen in your fridge too. So if you get a big package, make them into small cups and freeze them small, then you can take out whatever you need. We're gonna get this and we're gonna just spread this guy on there. Oh, look at that. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, give it a little color, a little fancy, right? Because uh, everybody knows masago and those are a little fancy, right? Fancy, fancy. Okay, so we got that going right there. That's looking good. And then what I would do is top it off with just a little bit of a sesame seed, just the final. Okay, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. That looks good. We'll get you a close-up, tight shot of that a little bit later. Okay, we're going to put these guys over here for now. Okay, so this, again, just to review, these are all reverse rolls, right, with the rice on the outside. Okay, so these rolls are all uramaki. These rolls are all rice on the outside. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to show you is a little bit different style, uh, still in the same genre, but this is going to be called hosomaki. Hosoi means thin or skinny, like skinny, and maki means roll. And this is where the side of the noriyu place is important, rough or shiny. We are going to do what side down? What side down? Shiny. I heard you through the zoom. I heard you. Shiny side down. And I'm going to place this kind of at the bottom of my roller mat, at the very bottom, because that's where I'm going to roll up from. Remember? Because I always roll from bottom to top. So I'm going to put this kind of on the bottom of the mat. Now, hosomaki is skinny roll, so it's going to be much less rice than the uramaki or the fat rolls, right? So we're going to use much less rice. So adjust that accordingly, okay? We are going to make a little bowl, but the concept is the same. Now, I'm going to leave a little gap at the top. I know that looks like bottom on TV, but relative to me, it's the top. We're going to leave a little gap there at the top. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little gap at the top. And then, same thing. I'm going to push down. I'm going to push down. I'm going to push down, and I'm going to cover the nori to the edges. And if you run out, grab a little bit more out of here. That's no problem. You can adjust as you go. Grab a little bit more. If you have too much, pick a little bit off and put it back in here. That's no problem. It's all about making uh, precise, precise uh, preparation and product, okay? And again, same thing. You want it to be even. But this hosomaki, since it's thin, is much, 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 much thinner than the California roll. Much thinner. I don't know if you guys can see this, okay? And I left a little gap at the top. You see the little black noni? I left a little gap. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do this. Let's use, do you remember those tunas that I cut earlier? I cut those strips. We're going to use these right here. And uh, see how I always fill? Every bit counts, right? Okay, every bit counts. I'm going to put this in the center of it. And then I'm going to use the mat. Okay, and I'm going to roll it from the bottom to the top. And the reason I left that gap at the top is, is so it'll close down on it. Okay, and then I'm going to finish rolling it with that gap area right on the cutting board. And this thing should be more of a square shape as well. Okay. All right. Oh, he doesn't want to stay up. Okay, and then don't forget, when you do the ends, choot, choot. Okay, we're going to leave that guy there. That is with tuna, right? That was with tuna. And that is called a tekkamaki. I'm sure you've all have seen that. Tekkamaki, kind of a more traditional roll. You probably don't even see that in restaurants anymore nowadays, huh? You probably don't, because people are ordering all these fancy rolls and stuff like that. We're going to make another one, except this time we're going to use our cucumbers that we cut. So for those that are vegetarian or don't like raw fish, like I mentioned before, with sushi making, it's all 
about your imagination, about what you want to put in the middle. You can put anything in the middle, anything you want. If you want to grill up some eggplant, if you want to, let's say, deep fry an asparagus or something like that, you can absolutely do that as well. And that's the beauty and versatility of sushi making. We can accommodate anyone's dietary or uh, their pre preferences, right? Their dietary needs or preferences. So with the cucumber roll, we like to, we add sesame seed. I don't know why, it's just traditional. I just do as I'm taught, don't question, okay? That's not, <laughs> maybe sushi making should be like raising children. Just do it, don't ask why, just do it, okay. Um, Let's get uh, some cucumbers in here, right? We're going to put some cucumbers in here. I don't want to, I, I put a couple in there because they're a little skinny. So put a couple in there. <laughs> okay, got that there. We're going to go from the bottom to the top. And we're going to roll these in. We're going to tuck it in. See, I'm using the mat to tuck that part in and let it fold over the black part. And again, square, square. Okay, and we're going to finish it, take it off and, and finish it off and we're going to make sure we wet our hands and do the edges, okay? So I don't know if you can see it. It looks kind of square, right? They look kind of, kind of square-ish, ish, right? Now, I have my cucumber roll, which is called kapamaki. K for kappa, K for cucumber, that doesn't work, okay. Tekamaki is the tuna roll, that works. T for tuna, tekka. Now you'll notice I put these two together, one on top of the other, because when I cut them, they'll come up with a nice design. Again, don't forget on your cutting. Use the full length of the knife. Let the knife do the work. Don't get scared and let it chop down, right? And remember too, you wanna cut straight. Don't cut it like an angle. Don't cut at an angle. Cut straight down, straight down. Very important, right? And when, Because when you do that, it's gonna all affect your presentation. And these, we're gonna put up, okay? We're gonna put up, look at that. Isn't that a nice pattern? And look at that, it's all perfectly level. See, boom, see? You don't have to show anybody home, perfect. <laughs> okay, so these are all perfectly level. You can see the beautiful color uh, combinations there. And same thing, we're gonna angle these down. Okay, and let's see if these are gonna fit on our presentation plate as well. Ooh, I think they'll fit. I think we got lucky and they're gonna fit. Look at that, look at that. Now we got a sushi platter going here, right? We got our California roll up here. <laughs> we got our Rocky roll right here. We have our special tuna specialty roll. And then we have our traditional kapamaki and tekamaki. Okay. All right. I got just a little bit more time here. So I'm going to show you a couple more little traditional things that you may or may not ever use. Okay. Um, and let's make sure our cutting board's dry here. Okay. Okay. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to get another piece of uh, nori here. Okay, we get another piece of, couple pieces of nori here. And this is called, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little nori strips called gunkan. This is for gunkan maki. Gunkan means like warship or battleship, okay? And you're gonna understand why in just a second. Okay, I need my longer knife here because this is a little longer. Okay, now this is kind of hard. You're gonna cut these into thirds. Again, don't ask why. That's just how I was taught. Okay, so cut it into thirds um, and some people use a kitchen scissor. You can do that. Um, but I'm just going to do this because I don't have any here, okay? Okay, is that pretty good? Is that pretty good? Is that thirds? All right, all right, good, okay. All right. My, my, my math estimation here is not too bad. So, um, oh, that one's not straight. That's okay, that's okay. We're going to cheat it. Okay, now, we got our thirds here, right? Now, what we're going to do is um, we're going to grab our uh, sushi rice again. And we're going to ball this up. And this time, I'm just going to grab a little ball. And what I'm going to do is kind of ball it up and form it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a teardrop shape with my fingers. Like, hey, okay, I'm using my middle finger teardrop. And the top and bottom are kind of sandwiching it down a little bit. And I'm just going to go one, two, three. There's a little teardrop. Okay, I, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, that's one, and we're gonna make another one. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I ball it up a little bit, and I'm making, I'm using my whole hand like a waka waka, and then make a little teardrop, boom, boom. And remember, these don't have to be perfect at all. You know why? We're gonna cover them up with the nori that we just made. So these don't have to be perfect at all. We can just make them really quick, 
and we'll just do these. And this is going to be for the Gunkan Maki, okay? We got one more here, and I'm going to just make one more set here. And it, you can see my rice hand is getting sticky, so I forgot. I got to put some uh, water on them. Okay, and I'll make one more set. And now this is a really versatile thing because it doesn't require you to have like rolling skills, okay? But it's going to require you to have a little different skills. Okay, move these over here. Now, the noni side that we cut, there's a cut edge, right? The edges that we cut are clean and, and uh, really, you know, precise. So those are the edges that you want facing up, if that makes sense, up. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so the other thing I did was I grabbed these two, and the shiny side is on the outside always. This is going to be a little tough for you to see, but so I'm putting my nori strips on the two sides, and you're going to have to play this back probably several times in slow motion, but this is another reason to check out the ACC Facebook video page. You can watch this over and over. We're going to take these two. We're going to take the top nodies. We're going to roll them together in here. And then we're going to take the bottom, and they're going to roll those guys together right there. And there is how to make one set of gunkan. Okay? We'll do it again. We're going to do this two more times. We're going to get our two nodies. I'm going to go here right on the side. Shiny sides out, rough sides in. We're going to rotate these guys around and roll it. We're going to rotate these guys around and roll it. Okay? One last time for those at home that weren't paying attention, okay? Uh, we're going to get the cut side up, right? So it's clean. And we're going to roll it. And we're going to roll it again, okay? And this is how you make a gunkan maki, okay? And... Uh, what we like to do with these are, is we can put these on a plate, okay? We can do however we want. And the nice thing about these is, we can start putting whatever we want. So remember all that kani salad that we made earlier? We can make nice little kani salad sushi like this. And this is called gunkan maki, right? So stuff that, let's say you don't want to put it in a roll, or you have maybe a little bit left over just a small amount of ingredients, right? And we can do our spicy tuna. We made those earlier, right? Put our spicy tuna in there. You keep it nice and fluffy, right? We don't want to shove it down. Okay, we put that in there. Uh oh, come back here, guy. Okay, put this in here. Make a nice spicy tuna. Okay, and oh, wait a minute. So who likes masago? Yeah, we can even make a masago one. See, I got to fluff this guy up. Fluff it up really good. Make it light. Make it light. Okay, make it light. This is really hard. Masago is very, very, very messy, as you will discover at home. Like, when you make sushi and you use masago, you'll find masago bits in your kitchen countertop for the next three weeks. Okay? And, hey, let's, let's, put, a little, um, let's put a little green onion garnish on the spicy tuna. Why not, right? Because that looks like a nice thing to put on there. And if someone's really spicy, you could give them an extra dot if you want to give them a little dab. Ooh, bam, bam, ooh, that's spicy. Okay. All right? So this is gunkan. Okay? Gunkan maki. The last thing that I'm going to show you for today, ah, yes, sadly our time is nearing its end. So the last thing I'm going to show you today is the regular, good old-fashioned nigiri sushi, okay? Nigiri kind of means to ball up, I think, with your hand. Um, and so this is more of the traditional sushi that you're used to seeing in Japan, right? The nigiri sushi. So we're going to start with our tuna slices that we have. My nigiri technique is actually not standard. So maybe, uh, maybe this is not the best uh, tutorial for you guys at home. Um, okay, I'm going to answer that question a second here. Okay, so we're going to grab a little tiny, tiny ball of rice. And we're going to take our tuna. Okay, take our tuna. Little ball of rice, okay? And then what we're going to do is this tuna is going to rest right underneath the, the four joints of my finger, and I'm going to hold it with my thumb, okay? This is going to go right here in the middle, and then I'm going to do what I like call Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm going to do the Spider-Man grab a little on the side, 
I'm going to finger roll this guy to the end, do this little side grab, quarter turn on this middle finger, and do that. And the reason is, is that is how it will kind of lay on the cutting board like that. Okay? Can you guys see that? Okay, so I'm going to do it again, but this is not the prescribed way. <laughs> so I'm doing a tutorial, but I'm teaching you like not the traditional way to do it. I'm going to ball this up, little ball, make it into like a little tiny oval. Get this guy right here. And this is what it looks like in full motion. Boom, boom, boom. I know that was fast. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I promise. Okay, I'll do it again. Okay, we'll keep this angle here. This, this fish is being held right here by my thumb, and it's being held on the joints of my finger. And then I'm going to get this in the middle. I'm going to pinch it this way. I'm going to pinch it sideways, and I'm going to pinch it to the quarter, and then I'm going to put it right on my plate. Okay? So I know that's a little bit difficult, and that's not really an official part of today's tutorial, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to show you. So one of the questions that I received on the chat was, uh, why rectangle versus circle? Um, a lot of it nowadays is just because it'll stand up better. And you'll notice these rolls that we do right here. The reason I opt for more of a rectangular uh, square shape than a circle is because that way it kind of stands on the plate better. And especially when you have all these toppings and stuff on there, they'll just stay better. So it's not really a traditional thing at all. It's kind of maybe morphed over time as kind of a presentation point and maybe also for practicality. So that's not really like a traditional uh, authentic thing at all. It's just something that I've kind of incorporated into my style of sushi making. Um, so again, I hope today that you were able to learn a little bit more and um, find out some different techniques about how to make different types of sushi. We went over the basic rolls, uramaki, that's the reverse roll. We went over hosomaki, which is the skinny roll. And today we did something new, the gunkan, which is the, uh, the, the battleship. And then we just did the traditional nigiri right here as well. So hopefully that gives you kind of a basic, basic uh, understanding and outlook on um, basic sushi making at home. Um, we're going to give you some links, I think, on, let's say, how to cut the tuna loin. Um, and if you're really hardcore, you can find my tutorial on how to make a California roll as well. Um, but if anybody at home or on the Zoom, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, um, now would be a wonderful time uh, for any questions or anything. Ted, you got any questions coming in? Let's see. If you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask a question, please feel free to do so so that we can hear you. Okay, we got a question from. We got a question. I think we answered that one, right? Yes, we answered the square shape versus round shape. And remember, I will not hesitate to tell you I don't know because there are many things that I don't know. Oh, yeah, you know, so the nori actually does come typically in a big square. And uh, we would have to fold them in half and crack them. But I, by the half-cut nori. I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> but it says, can you see it says half-cut? Where am I? Can you see it says half-cut? Right here, it says half-cut. So I buy the one that's half-cut. You, you don't have to do that. You can cut them yourself. But uh, if I buy it half-cut already, that's just one less touch of the nori, right? And the nori, you want to remember, keep it super dry. It's got to be super separated, and it can't get wet at all. So good question. Hi. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, that's a good question. There are many, many different grades and brands of nori. Um, I am not an expert on all the different grades and brands. Uh, so the best advice I would give you for home use, uh, for home, is try to go by the price point. I know that's not the best way to shop, but don't get the cheapest one. I don't think you need the most, most expensive one for what we're doing here today as well, but try to find a middle grade. Um, they might be able to help you at the market to uh, select a little bit better, but that's the key. You have to get a little better quality and grade of nori 
Um, that's really what's going to affect. And like I said, too, you want to keep it fresh. You want to make sure you use it. And that's what's going to keep it um, good. Because if it's stale and old, it'll be chewy and hard to grab, too. Yeah, so that's all a part of it. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Good question. So I've got a question, Koichi. Yes. In Japan, mm -hmm. is sushi considered a main dish, an appetizer for certain occasions? Do they eat it for the same occasions that we do? Um, I think sushi in Japan is much, much more common. And uh, I was fortunate enough to visit Japan prior to the pandemic starting. And uh, sushi is everywhere. Um, it's really everywhere. And it goes, it ranges from the highest of the high Michelin star quality sushi to the Family Mart. Family Mart is kind of like their 7-Elevens in Japan. There's one on every corner in the populated areas. And for me personally, that sushi is delicious. It's fantastic. It's actually pretty inexpensive in those little Family Mart type situations. So they eat it all the time. They can eat it for anything. Um, it is a main dish. It is, it's for everything. Um, but again, you can get super fancy too. And they can get, you know, the real rare stuff. And you can go super, super high end. So it can also be a very special occasion, expensive dish as well. But it runs the full range from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there any more questions from our online audience? Mm -hmm. OK. So with that, uh, on behalf of ACC Senior Services, Kuchi, yeah. thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for having me. To entertain us and educate us on the fine art of sushi making for beginners. All right, Ted, let's eat this sushi. What do you say? If you insist. Let's eat it. I'm All there. right. Everybody take okay, care. Have a good everyone. day. Have a good day.